Yo, what's good everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be dropping one of the most influential lessons that I've learned throughout these past couple years being in business and just life in general, okay? And this is how to break any limiting belief that is holding you back. To try and test it, like before you click off this video, I'm like, Matt, bro, sounds ridiculous. You can't just say you can break any limiting belief. But hear me out. This can be applied to almost any limiting belief that you have. And this is just what's worked for me. Perfect record, it's worked every single time, so I can't wait to show you guys. And I hope if you implement this, it'll change your way of thinking, your train of thought, and it'll break you out of the prisons of your that are in your mind as soon as possible, okay? Just bear with me. So how do we actually break any limiting belief that's holding us back in our life? So for example, it could be with money, it could be in relationships, it could be with health, it could be anything. The way you do it, and the basis of this video is going to be about winning the mini arguments inside of your head. So what that essentially means is when you have a thought, when you have a limiting belief, for example, you're telling yourself all these false narratives. So let's take an example. Let's take health. Classic example. I can, let's say I, I can, or I find it difficult. I find it difficult to get into shape, to get in shape. Or I find it difficult to, to bulk. I find it difficult to cut, whatever your goal is. I find it difficult to get in shape, let's just say that. Your brain's gonna start coming up with all kinds of reasons. Look, none of these, none of these limiting beliefs, you gotta understand, so this is one of the main principles. None of these limiting beliefs, you made it up. You didn't make any of these up. These came, this came from environment, this came from maybe another family member, who told you that you were un, like out of shape, you were fat, you were unhealthy. The seed was planted in your head at some point in your life up until now. So, and this is stuff you probably know. If you read the book Psycho-Cybernetics or if you watch a lot, a lot of Sam Ovid stuff, you'll know what I'm talking about. But all the thoughts inside your head, all these limiting beliefs that's holding you back, they are not yours, they're not originally yours. They have come from the environment, they have come from someone else, they have come from God knows where. So. You're doing yourself a favor by going back and hit, going back in time and trying to dissect where did that belief specifically come from, and who 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 said it to me? Okay, so for example, like if you have struggled with getting into shape your whole life, you say you find it hard to get get into shape. I find it hard eating healthy. I find it hard sticking to a diet or an exercise routine, whatever. Right? Then it's no use someone telling you or your friend telling you. To just like, oh, that's nonsense. Oh, that doesn't make sense. Like, you just you just need to get in the gym. It's super easy. No, there's no use in doing that. I don't know if you've experienced it before. Maybe you have experienced it before. You tell your friend these things, or vice versa. You, you have a friend who's struggling with getting in shape. You try egg them up, egg them up a bit. Try and big them up. Try and encourage them, right? But they seem to just not want to accept that belief. They seem to just fight you back on it. If that makes sense. And the reason for that is because their brain. Because this is such a belief that's so strong in their in their mind, the brains come up with tons of arguments to support why they find it difficult to get into shape. So the, this will look like, and this is all like subconscious too, subconscious or or maybe you can bring it to consciousness, like we're going to do now. So, like I find it difficult to get in shape. Oh, why is that, Matt? Oh, it's just like I you know I can't resist my cravings. I love X Y Z food. I don't have, I don't have the discipline. Um, I'm not consistent in the gym slash find it boring. Your brain is going to come up. The reason why you have these limiting beliefs and why they are so strong is because you, your brain has come up with so many different reasons to support that claim. So you list all these reasons down. You want to, you can even do this exercise with me right now. Write down, a, write down a limiting belief at the top of the page and just come up with all the reasons why you think you, you support that, okay? Your brain just come, come up with so many reasons why it believes that. Therefore, that's why the belief is so strong in, in this limiting belief. Take a shot every time I say the word belief. But that's why you have so much conviction in this. And that's why you've been stuck in the past same thought loop, the vicious, the vicious thought loop for the past God knows how long, okay? So the whole thing about breaking this limiting belief is you have to win the mini argument inside your head. 
it's no good a friend trying to egg you up. No, it's no good trying to spit words of wisdom or words of encouragement. It doesn't work because you're just going to default back into the, the false narratives that you keep telling yourself. So we got to become conscious of this and we have to really just be, like, just debate it. Like argue against our mind. When the, the, argue against our mind. Like really just like be Sherlock Holmes against our mind. And the way you do that is winning the arguments against this. So let's say this is what you come up with. This is why you find it so difficult to get into shape. Let's say I, my sleep schedule is, is that. Let's go through it one by one, okay? The reason why a belief is formed or the reason why a belief is so strong, conviction in a belief is fueled by, you know, emotion, we'll get to that in a minute, is fueled by, you know, coming up with, with many arguments that support it, with proof, that's the word, by proof and emotion. You believe so much in the, the barriers that hold you back is because you have so much proof in the past. You're looking, you're actively looking for proof or you've looked for proof in the past to support that claim, why it is true. So all it is is just proof and then you, you feel a strong emotion towards it. So getting in shape, you feel like you feel in dread. You find, you feel frustration, all these different emotions, right? All this just spirals together and then that's why you have such a, such conviction in a, in a limiting belief that you hold in your mind. So all we have to do is kind of reverse engineer that. Okay. We need proof. We need proof that stacks on because you're right now, the proof that you have is stacked on one end of the scale. So pretend this is a scale. You're stacking rocks on one end of the scale to support the claim, to support this limiting belief. That's why you're stuck, guys, because you've stacked so much rocks on this, on this side over the years, and you never managed to reverse the belief. You never managed to stack rocks on the other side. So how do we actually stack rocks on the other side, is the question. It's by creating and winning many arguments inside of your head. Or finding proof in the past that claim that proves this is false. All the shit that you've been telling yourself is not true. There's nothing objectively right or wrong, it's just you found proof that said thing is right or wrong. Okay, so I can't resist my cravings. Well, that's not true. That's not true. Remember that one week? So you can look in the past, like remember that one, let me move this. Remember that one week when you were so disciplined and you didn't eat any, you know, you stopped eating sugary foods for 30 days and you actually did that with ease. Remember that? That's proof. Okay, cool. So that shows that it is in you that you can resist your cravings. And like, let's say I love XYZ food. Well, that's fine. You can still eat it. One, one dose isn't gonna make you fat, it's just, so do you see how I'm trying to come up with arguments and really just debate against all the thoughts that I've held captive in my head? It's just that everything in moderation. Cool. I can't resist my cravings. Oh my God. That's why I find it so hard to get in shape. Well, that's not true. Do you remember that one week when you just cut out sugary foods? I mean, one, one month when you just cut out sugary foods and you did that with ease. So you can resist your, you can resist your cravings. It is inside of you. You know how to do it. You just have to bring that side of you out. I love XYZ food so much, I can't seem to resist it. Well, that's fine, you can still eat it. One dose isn't gonna kill you or make you fat. It's just that you need to keep it in moderation. You can still eat it, that's fine, I'm not cutting out. I don't have a discipline. And then you guys just, just look back in parts of your, like times in your life when this is just, when you prove this, uh, you know, this argument false. You just find the proof to stack all the rocks on the other side of the scale. So that way, if you just do this, guys, if you just exercise and you just do it with repetition day by day, let's say you read the list or you add more to the list, your brain's gonna start, your, the part of your brain called the RAS, so I suggest, your reticular activating system, you guys, I suggest you look that up. You're gonna start having confirmation bias. I hope that makes sense. Uh, you're gonna have start, start having confirmation bias. You're gonna start shifting the weights. You're gonna start 
you know, second guessing the limiting belief that you have in your head. I'm like, okay, well, actually, you know, I, there is times when I find it easy to get in shape, or I can actually get in shape. I do believe I can do that. And then the, the weight, the weights are gonna tip in your favor. And then before you know it, with repetition, with emotion, with and by putting in the work, most importantly, to support it, like actually get in the gym, actually, you know, eat clean, actually get your sleep schedule on point. Then in no time, this limiting belief is gonna is gonna rise. It's gonna lift off your shoulders, right? I hope this has been helpful. Let me give you another example just to drive the point home. So lately, what I've been you know kind of struggling with is, is sales. So there's always this, there's been this limiting belief in my mind where I'm not that good at sales. I'm not bad at sales by any means, but I could be a lot better. So that's really what I've been working with this past month is just. Getting better at sales, getting a good clo- getting good at closing, and actually being on the phone. Okay, so I've done this myself. I've, like, I'm a man of my word, and I, I practice what I preach because I've done this myself all month. So let's just say the limiting belief I had was I'm not good at sales. That's completely wrong. And then when I when I start thinking of why I'm not good at sales, all these reasons come up in the past as to why I'm not probably not good at sales. I fumbled that deal that I could have easily closed. I went all for, there was a time in my coaching business when I went on a drought for like eight months straight, didn't sign any clients. And then there was like two, there was like a week when I signed two clients and I went back down to zero again. So you could say that's proof, right? There's a quote, I can't remember who said it, but whether you think you're right or wrong, you're correct. Or whether you believe it's true or false, you're correct. And that goes. That basically means whatever you de- whatever you deem as truth, you're always going to be right. So it's just about picking the truths that serve you the best. And clearly, this wasn't serving me. So I'm not good at sales. And then all these reasons come up. Oh, in the past, yeah, that's true. Because like, in the past, I I fumbled this this deal that I could have easily closed, or you know, I stutter when I get to the pitch, or I just can't get around. I'm really bad at objection handling. All this BS that comes in your mind. And yes, maybe it is true. Maybe you did do that in the past. But again, it's all about replacing thoughts to ones that serve us. Replacing to beliefs that do actually serve us in the long run, okay? So now we're going to disprove this. We're going to, you know, you come up with the reasons. That's great and all. Why you're probably not good at self. But we need to, all we need to do is just stack rocks on the other side as to why, why we are good at self. I'm good at self, Okay. What's the proof? Because you can't just say these statements without proof. Otherwise, your brain's just not going to pick it up and adopt it as a new belief. Plus, you have to feel some sort of way about it. You have to actually feel good or whatever emotion, okay? And actually put in the work too. So this whole month, I've just been spamming mock calls. I've just been doing call reviews, objection handling, watching sales training. So the action is there to back it up. And then you couple couple that with this in this exercise, guarantee you, Compared to start of the month to the end of the month, I'll be a completely different person with sales, okay? I'm good at sales. Well, because of X, Y, Z. I've closed deals in the past for my coaching business, high ticket, so it shows I can do it again. If I can do it once, I can do it again. That's a key belief you need to have. But if you can do something once, you can do it again, it's in. Um, I've closed deals for multiple different offers. I've closed for my own coaching business. I've closed for, the, like, I've hopped on the phone sometimes. I've helped, I've helped out with closing deals with uh, the offer I was on before, with the appointment setting. And then what other proof do I have? Well, I'm surrounded by mentors, I'm surrounded by people who are crushing it in sales, so I can just easily ask them for help. And I just make a whole ass list as to why actually I'm good at sales or have the potential to be good at sales. All it is, is just winning the mini arguments inside your head so that you kind of change the narrative. You know, you're, you're leaning onto one side of the scale that says that that's your limiting belief, that supports your limiting belief, why you can't do X thing, why you can't do Y thing. Two, just stacking rocks on the other side and being like, okay, that's actually not true, Matt. You're telling yourself all these, all this BS and all these lies. Let's actually look at the other side. Why you actually, why you can do this. Why you can achieve that. Why you actually are good at, at this thing. I hope that makes sense. This is gonna make sense more in repetition. If you do it over and over again, you make a list, you add it to the list day by day, like what I've been doing. And again, Conviction in, conviction in the belief is fueled by proof and emotion. So all we're doing, guys, again, just to drive the point home, we're just looking for proof 
that the opposite is true. We're just looking for proof that our limiting belief isn't, isn't fucking true. It's false. It's not serving us. Therefore, we need to think otherwise. We need to believe that we are good at sales. We are capable at closing. You need to believe that, you know, you can get in shape. You have the ability to get in shape. You find it easy. You can build massive, massive amounts of wealth. You can have an abundant dating life. You can have an abundant social life. I used to be super introverted. Now I don't have a problem speaking to strangers and making friends, right? This is the same thing that I've used over and over again in my life to break the limiting beliefs that's been holding me back inside my head. No matter how fucking strong they are, I still use this to this day. And it's working right now or it has worked in the past, 100% of the time. The only time it hasn't worked is if I didn't commit to this process, okay? So get the proof, get the emotion, put in the work towards that because none of this is, none of this is, not, is gonna work if you don't put in the work, all right? You're not just gonna get magically in shape overnight if you're not actually putting the actions, if you're not actually hitting the gym, doing all that good stuff. If you're not doing mock calls, if you're not actually getting on the phone regularly, getting your reps in, and of course you're not gonna be good at sales. So I hope this helps. This is what's helped me personally to break any and all the limiting beliefs that I've had so far, and I'm gonna use this moving forward if any come out, because that's inevitably gonna happen. So I hope you go, I hope you use this. I hope this helps a lot. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe if you're new to the channel. Share this with a friend who needs it, and. See you in the next one.